Hi YouTube friends, today I'm making some more play food. Um, you might have seen my video about making picnic sets. Today I'm making desserts and I've already made cookies and these are pretty easy. These are just two round discs. All of my food is made of wood. So I've got sugar cookies. I'm going to make ice cream cones, some cakes and sprinkles today. And I'll just show you some of the things I'm using. These aren't that hard to find. These are those rings. People use them a lot to make baby suitors. Um, before I go any further, the reason I'm wearing gloves is because I have this stamp on my hand from the Nutcracker play I went to. And uh, instead of spending hours scrubbing it off, and then my hand would be red, and then you ask me why my hand is red. I have uh, one and a half inch rings one and three quarter inch rings. I have two inch rings, but I don't have the bags. I got them quite a long time ago, actually. These are from Bear Woods Supply. Oh, this is also from Bear Woods. I have one inch round balls. And for my ice cream cone, I spent a lot of time looking for the right shape. And one day I was in the dollar store and saw these are tiny plant pots. Uh, they're obviously just for crafts because they don't have a hole in the bottom for draining any kind of water. So they're meant for crafts. And if you go like this, this is a wheel. And one ring, the one and one, one and three quarter, the one and a half, and the one inch ball, you've made an ice cream cone. Now this is what I consider the fun part, the painting. You have two choices. You could first glue everything together and then paint them um, as a solid piece, or you could paint each part and then glue it together. I am going to do the second option and paint each piece and then glue it together for everything except for the sprinkles. This is my sprinkles bottle. And I'm going to make it first because everything gets sprinkles. So we have to create the sprinkles. So I'm going to glue this together and the sprinkles is actually very easy to make as well. So I'm just going to put glue around the perimeter here and then put that little called, it was called the one inch plug on top. I believe this is used really to hide screws and um, end pieces in carpentry. But here we are using it as the top of our sprinkles bottle. Now let's put some holes in the top of the sprinkles bottle. We will use black and the end of a paintbrush to make dots. So I have this. The writing's still there. I can read it. It's a round plaid number two. So this is just a paintbrush set that you'll get. You can find this in Walmart. So when I make dots, I always do a couple first to just practice. And I'm going to go three across. Two in the middle. Three across. And you have to put these in here where the kids can't get the sprinkles out. One on the side and one on the other side. They don't need to be perfect because kids fill stuff in with their imaginations. They don't. A Liquitex Basics round number five, and I'm going to make this bottle this very pretty uh, it's Key West blue. No, it's Key West turquoise blue in French, Key West in English. Apple Barrel brand. I'm going to get a little bit of this out here into my palette. There's another piece that gets painted this green as well. It is the top piece of the ice cream cone and this piece. We'll mark them so we remember later. Those also get the same color. So we'll paint them next since we put the paint in our palette. 
So it's pretty simple. I'm just going to paint this blue in here. I use this color a lot. It looks very pretty when after it's varnished. Something about this paint in the varnish just makes it pop. It's very pretty. Now we'll do these two pieces that are going to be the same color. My cherries, these are tiny little flower pots. I'm going to sit the cherries in them just as a holder. These flower pots have nothing to do with the craft. They're just used. I use them to paint round objects. They hold them for me while the paint is drying. When I paint a round object, I paint half and let uh, that half dry and then I turn it over. And when I paint something like this ring, I'll do the opposite here. I'll paint half the ring, let that half dry, and then I can hold this part to paint the other half. Okay, since we have the black out, our next color is going to be dark brown. So I'm going to add some. This is apple barrel nutmeg brown. Put a little bit in there. And this piece is brown. So we're just going to take a paintbrush and paint it a dark brown. While I'm waiting for this to dry, I often do this while I'm waiting for something to dry. I'll do another task. I'm going to glue the label on the sprinkles bottle. I use Mod Podge and it doesn't matter where, just pick a spot and put a generous amount of Mod Podge all over the sprinkles bottle. And here's my label, so sprinkles with a heart. The eye has a heart as the dot. Put it right down there and sprinkles in the background. I made this in paint. So I just put this together in paint on the computer and printed it in color. And put that on there like that. You can get Mod Podge all over. I'm going to varnish later, but the varnish is compatible with the Mod Podge, so it doesn't harm anything to have Mod Podge put on first. There's our sprinkles. These two pieces are going to get a little bit of glitter. So again, I get out my Mod Podge. Let's put the water away. There we go. And I have my glitter in a bowl here, and I'm going to put Mod Podge on them and dip them into the glitter to get just a touch. And then after that, I let it dry for a few minutes and put on another layer of Mod Podge to seal the glitter in. Here's the glitter in the bowl. Mod Podge on the piece. Yeah, move it around in there to get some glitter on it. And then Mod Podge again to seal it on. Whenever I use glitter in crafts, I make sure it's secured. People don't like having glitter all over their house, so you don't want a kid playing with a toy and then they get glitter on their hands and then the glitter's all over the house. So I do several coats of Mod Podge and varnish to seal it in. While these are drying, we are going to make the cherries. The cherries have two colors, a dark red and a glitter red. This is metallic acrylic from Deco Art, and I love these. These have really good coverage. They don't even need varnishing. They're like paint and varnish all in one. And this is Red Bird Deco Art Crafters Acrylic. It is a lovely dark red. So we'll use the dark red first. And I just put my, whenever I paint something round, I need to hold it in something. So I'll put them here in these little pots. These are found at my dollar store. I bought them, I saw them one day and bought them thinking maybe some craft at you know, some point will call for them. And meanwhile, I'm using them to hold round objects while I paint them. So I just do the dark red. Coverage doesn't matter because the dark red is going to be the side that's downwards. You know, this point won't even show. Now we'll use our white, apple barrel white. I love apple barrel white and black and brown. It just has nice flow. That's what I like about apple barrel. Especially if you're doing those dots, it's 
perfect consistency. This is white, so this is the bottom part of my ice cream cone, and this is a wheel. So if you go in the toy parts section, this is a wheel, and it is, I'd say that probably at two inches diameter, five centimeters diameter wheel. Wheels are useful for desserts. So this is going to be painted white just on the outside. So I can paint it and spin it like this. Just like that. And we'll put it back in the ice cream cone to dry. And this giant chocolate chip, that's what it's called, bought on Etsy. It's not white all over. I just paint white on the bottom half. This is going to have drizzles of toppings on it, so you don't need to paint the whole thing white if you were going to do it the way I do. Whatever craft you do, you should do what you do it in your own way. Now this is another wheel. I'll measure this one. It's flat wheel, so it's really nice for desserts. And it is two and a two and a quarter inches diameter. Six centimeters diameter, flat. That will go on there. And this is the bottom of another dessert and it has no paint on it. It's left wood grain. So we'll get back to our cherries. The time has come to glue everything together. Uh, what I still have out here are the paints I still need. This is going to be my one of my drizzled toppings. It is a metallic festive green. And these are for sprinkles. I have vivid yellow, light magenta, cerulean blue, and green yellow. Sprinkles will be those colors. And there will also be a chocolate brown drizzle topping. Just I'll do the chocolate brown first and then the green. So this is the time where we glue everything together. You could also use wood glue at this point. However, you would need to wait for it to dry for a couple hours. I spin it so you can see it from all directions. Press it down and the cherry. Now the cherry, I don't put glue on the cherry, I put glue in here and the cherry fits perfect in there with the dark side down. It's kind of like that's a shadow, the darker red. This is a sort of a cookie or a festive dessert of some kind. These toys are perfect for kids that want to help mom in the kitchen but uh, mom, for safety reasons, because she's really busy, she wants her child, or anyone who's cooking, I shouldn't say mom, but grandma, aunt, dad, grandpa, whoever's baking, you know, they don't want to tell the child they can't be in the kitchen, but they want them, you know, kind of out of the way of the hot oven and they're measuring things and trying to concentrate. So you could give them their own little baking set like this, and so they could be in the kitchen in another corner, another section on the counter with their own baking set. They're with you, but not in the way of your measuring and whatever else you do. Right, so there we have everything. There's some finishing touches, which are toppings and sprinkles. That's why we made the sprinkles first, because the sprinkles go on everything.
So my dippings, I'll alternate the, the toppings. What I do is I put a bit of black. I try to give it a three-dimensional look with shadow. So I'll have a darker brown there. Dip my brush in water, dry it off, and then come up with a lighter brown. You get a little bit of a hint of three-dimensional, a three-dimensional drip. And come from the top, and now this one comes down over the cookie. So it's kind of like this is a cookie and a meringue dessert. So some of my green topping is on its own, like that, and then some of it overlaps the dark brown. Next step is the sprinkles. This is the second last step. Sprinkles and then varnish. So it takes just a little bit of paint. And I just have fun with this. It doesn't have to be something to stress about. I go one color at a time. I add the sprinkles in sort of a zigzaggy motion and don't worry too much about it, overlapping them sometimes. So what I do is I take my round plaid number two brush, I'll do yellow first, and I go like this so now it's become a flat. That's just how I, you could also go get a flat, but since I had this brush out already, and I just go like this, sometimes I go horizontal, Vertical, diagonal, diagonal, just going up and down. Sprinkles don't have to all be the same size because in reality they aren't. And on the ice cream cone, I only do this in the dark brown layer. Next, it doesn't matter what order you do the color in, but I'll do the green next. Exact same thing all over again. Sometimes it's too messy if you have too much paint on your brush. So. I'm ready now for the final step, and that is to give two coats of this Liquitex high gloss varnish, and I like to use a fan brush. I'm not gonna bother varnishing the bottoms of these, I'm just varnishing the tops, and what this does is it gives it a nice glossy look, and it also makes the toys washable. So for example, let's say a child drops one of these in their tomato soup. Both the tomato soup, the child can keep eating it. <laughs> this varnish, it creates a, a really solid coating, a strong coating. So none of the varnish or the paint will come off and the toy can be washed with soap and water. That is why I use this two coats of this varnish. I get asked all the time about these toys and if a child puts it in their mouth, is, you know, 
is it safe? And in my opinion, it's this varnish that gives it this solid exterior coating. It really dries to polymer matrix. That's what it is. I feel it's far safer for a child to put this sprinkles bottle in their mouth than it is some crazy toxic plastic. Especially those new squishy toys. Those things are flammable. I wouldn't want my child chewing on a squishy. Oh. There we go. And I'll let this sit for half an hour and then I'll give it another coat of varnish. I'll show you the finished project in a moment. <laughs> 